Anthony Martial, Jose Mourinho. Is Martial going to get his wish and get out of Manchester United? Surely. There's, there's no other way. I mean, they already didn't like each other before. And now with Martial leaving the tour and leaving the U.S., to come back home to Paris for the birth of his second child, which is, you know, which is very understandable, but not even letting Mourinho know when he was coming back, not giving any news to the club. This is not a way to behave, I think. And, and you know, if he wanted them to be sure that he wanted to get out, I think they know now for sure. Again, the thing is, a lot of clubs are like him, a lot of clubs are interested. Tottenham is one of them, Bayern Munich is another one, Atletico Madrid is another one, even PSG, again, his, his hometown, are interested. But I think... After the money United paid for him two years ago now, three years ago, sorry, they, you know, they would want a lot of money for him. And, and I'm not sure a lot of clubs are ready to pay that kind of money for someone who, as we said many times on the show, in terms of attitude and behaviour, is not the best player for that. No, it's, it's uh, sorry, it's, you know, for, for his sanity and his career, he has to get away, right? If you put a graph, for whatever reason, of, of, of Anthony Martial's Man United career, it would be so up and down. You know, the high points are very high mm -hmm. and the low points are very low. There's very rarely been sort of something in the middle, like a David Silva at Man City, who you can put down for a 7 and 8 out of 10. And I'm not comparing the players, by the way, but I'm saying the consistency levels, it's something that a young player has got to, uh, to, try, and, to try and get into his game. He's got the talent. Yes. He's got the pace. Mm -hmm. I've seen him in some games, and one game in particular, when France were playing Germany in a friendly, and I know it was a friendly... I thought he was outstanding, him on one side and Coleman on the other. But it's almost like when Anthony Martial wants to do it. And I think, as, as Jill said, that's probably one of the reasons, one of the reasons why some of the big clubs are a little bit, uh, find it a little bit tough to, to, and bulking at the price that Man United want to recoup from this player because of his inconsistency well, or maybe even his attitude. You, you know, when you, you look at Anthony Martial, uh, you're absolutely spot on, Craig. We're all waiting for him to explode in the Premier League. So I think he's got to get away because the love-hate relationship that he must have with his manager, coach, whatever you want to call Mourinho, because he doesn't, he doesn't develop talent. I'm sure, can he not get him on the training ground? Have a word with him and say, look, you are such a special player. You can do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. It sounds like you're saying there's more Mourinho than Martial. I, I actually am because... Somebody will, will. I think it's a so, bit of both, Paul. Somebody will get to this kid. Yeah, but you know when you're in a situation where the gaffer, the gaffer doesn't he believe in you. He would be the first attacking player to suffer under Mourinho. Well, let, let, listen, and John will tell you, he was suffering under Van Gaal. Mm. He was suffering the same. If you, if you remember, his, one of his first half a dozen games, or it might have been his first game for Man United, when he got the ball on the left hand side and he, he ran with his pace and the ball was on a piece of string and it was the quick feet and the defenders were falling over. Mm -hmm. You'll see that. You might see that once every three or four games. Yeah, yeah. I think the high point of Martial's time at Manchester United was the day he signed, frankly. Mm. <laughs> it's been downhill more or less ever since, which is not to say he isn't potentially a terrific player, as the boys have said, but some very, very good players have been misfits at Manchester United over the years, and I'm afraid he's the latest in that category. Welcome into Extra Time, your best chance to interact with the show. As always, I remind you, use the hashtag FC Extra Time. I like the questions we have today, because there's pretty much one that perfectly fits each of our guests. Ooh. Let's begin with Jules. This is from Nick. Jules, who is your favorite player on the French national team? <laughs> oh. Um, oh, it's tough, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one, Nick. <laughs> I... You mean the French team that just won the World Cup, right? Oh, that, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Median over there. Uh, Unbelievable. Um, I will go for Kylian Mbappé. I will go for Kylian Mbappé, of course I will, because he's just so special, and I, I really believe we don't see those players very often, and because he's from Paris, obviously, uh, because there's so much more to come from him for so long as well, I hope. Um, that I have to go for Kylian. So Jules hates N'Golo Kante, copy that. <laughs> uh, Paul, this no. one's for you. <laughs> Paul, this one's for, uh, for you. If you could go back in time and join a club that you never played for during your career, which would it be and why? Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> Not Norwich. It would be uh, the Liverpool side. I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to play against that really great 
Liverpool team when they were winning Champions League, uh, well, sorry, European Cup as it was in the old days. Such a difficult team to play against. Uh, I would have loved to. Uh, Just thinking about you and Nicola at the same club. I know, I know you've, I know you've <laughs> managed at the same club. Or you were. What were you doing when he was managing? I was Not a lot. <laughs> well, I did it all. How, right, here's one. How difficult is it to assist that Muppet? It's, it must it's, be difficult. It, I mean, because he's, he's like. It's rail. difficult to keep him on the track. No, as the host of this show, I have no idea what you're I talking about. I mean, there must have been a lot of hand holding for you. <laughs> there, was, yeah. there was a lot of waking up as well when we were traveling. Oh, yeah. Right. All right, uh, Ali yeah, wants little. to know, uh, John says, this is for you, John, uh, could Zidane be the right replacement if Mourinho gets sacked and or walked Ooh. away? Um, why would he want to do it? That would be my response to that. Yeah, but I don't think if you're Zinedine Zidane, Still you're necessarily got... Yeah, but not at the moment, at the same level as the one that he's... Well, nobody's at that level, right? No, no, but I think you, you want to go somewhere, if you're Zidane, you want to go somewhere where, yes, you can make an impact, but you've got a fair chance of doing so. And I'm not sure, given the corporate structure of Manchester United at the moment, that that would be the place where you would have that, that level playing field, if you like, where you had a fair chance. Remember at the beginning of the segment when I said there was one question that kind of fit each of our guests? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh. So what, go on, what have I got? Julian wants to know, what is the delay? excuse and reasoning from your employer for not providing you with comfortable chairs or preferably a couch. Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> you hated I the coach. I told you. I don't hate the coach. You hated the coach. You, you, you didn't like I said to my boss, bum it. <laughs> you did it. What did they do to it? Do, do we know? Burned it. They did? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's in Nichols' house. He <laughs> <laughs> came, came in with a big van. Big <laughs> truck. Because <laughs> he, he heard it was free, see? Right. <laughs> And if it was free, it was yeah. out. It doesn't matter what colour it was, it's free. And even if it didn't fit, right. you saw it in half, right. get it right. in his lounge. Right. Free. Slam it together. Uh, I didn't like the couch. I thought it was a little bit outdated. I think this studio, I might be biased, is very nice. Mm -hmm. Very clean. Did you design very, it? Very glassy. <laughs> these, these chairs are a little bit uncomfortable. I don't know. The problem with these chairs is that you need. The trouble when, is, when what it's... happened was they took the wheels off them. When we, we did a couple of shows, and I think people were. Wiggling. Oh, wiggling yep, around. Yep. So you took the wheels off and now when you come to the studio, <laughs> you can't get the chair. <laughs> you can't get the chair under the glass. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you are. Look at the wheels. Nice so, yeah. Wheels. There you go. It's nice though, eh? I'm yeah. Not, ah, it's great. Yeah. This is a problem now. I've got too close. Right. And I have to go stuck. back the way. Stuck. You'll be here all day. Yeah. They just don't want us to get complacent, I think. You know, they don't want us to get comfortable. Well, that's, that's, that's a, that could be a, an issue for HR. All right. <laughs> I demand to be comfortable in my job. <laughs> all right, that's John, all I got John's for wearing you. my tie, by the way. Yeah. You know what? I didn't get the memo that we were all wearing ties. I appreciate it. Oh, no, yeah, you're okay. Well, the, the shirt's not the best. But, I mean, I have to say, it's not. I mean, i am not got a, the, hand, the pocket handkerchief. Oh, you don't like it? Hey, well, no, the thing it's, is, very, it's very festive. It and doesn't even go. You, you, what do you mean it doesn't go? What? It doesn't even go. You're a GQ model now. You know, Absolutely, I am. I can see your button peeking out from behind that tie. Don't tell me what goes and what doesn't. My tie. Well, that's, what's uh, wrong with my tie? No, you're all right with that tie. Wait, I was going to not wear a tie, but I... That's a tie that I wore in Miami the other night at the ICC yeah. game, and somehow John is wearing it. You can got I just, ties can I just say, this is my tie, because someone couldn't be bothered to go back mm -hmm. home and pick up a tie for the broadcast in Miami the other day. It was 20 minutes of his time. He wasn't prepared to spend that, so I was asked to provide a tie for him. He then spent the entirety of the evening moaning about the tie I'm sorry. that he was wearing. Mo yes, I know. Burley. Burley and moaning. Land. <laughs> he was wearing the yellow one. Yeah. Thank God. Ooh. I love that he used can't be bothered to describe you, because it's your favorite line. Well, we were on ESPN2, and I thought, I'll get away with a nice jacket and a shirt, and then I thought, no, I've got to make an effort here. And you didn't. Well, I did. I said to John, how many ties <laughs> have you got with John's got to make an effort. Right, come on, get off. Give me John, a John. Okay. <laughs> I've got this chair now. Pretty good time oh, today if you look over there. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. Good. All oh, right. It's even better if you shut up. Good show. <laughs> that's it for us. Uh, make sure to catch tomorrow's show. Proper time, guys. Nice time. Probably won't I'll be done it. as quickly, but you know, we'll give it a I'll shot. Love. If you don't want it, I'll have it. I'll bring a tie. <laughs> great. You, you dress nickel first. <laughs> and we'll worry about everything else. It seems as PSG have their eyes squarely set on N'Golo Conte. How realistic is he that he could make the move?
to France. It's very realistic. He's their number one uh, target. His position at the number six, the defensive midfielder, he's the, the, the one position really they want to strengthen. They lost Thiago Mota, who retired uh, this summer after, after last season. Lassana Diara is not up to the task for the new manager, Thomas Tuchel. So Conte, who PSG wanted to sign when he chose Chelsea after leaving Leicester, uh, he's, he's the top of the list. He's, top, he's the top target. They have the money to do it. I think Conte, he's tempted uh, to, to join PSG as well, his home club, his hometown. Uh, although Chelsea now are pushing hard to give him a new deal and to try to keep him at, at Stamford Bridge. Supposedly the most recent offer from Chelsea, £300,000 a week. Oh, is, yes. he, is he worth it to him? Listen, he's worth his weight in gold to probably most clubs, this player. I, I don't know how far Chelsea want to push the boat out now. Uh, Abramovich has been uh, pulling the reins in in terms of the, the finances, both in spending players uh, and in the, uh, the, the wages department. The stadium that they were going to build, it's been shelved. Chelsea are saying, uh, no, no, it's in the back burner. We're here and it's gone. Uh, so things have changed drastically at Chelsea. A new manager coming in is a very difficult time. Previously, Chelsea have spent fortunes and players are not doing that anymore. So if Sarri comes in and he loses N'Golo Kante, it, it's just making his job all the more difficult. It's absolute madness if they sell, as Craig says, possibly the best number six in world football, by a long way. He's an incredible player, incredible character. When you look at the... Sarri's walked into this sort of imbalanced team. You know, what's going on with Hazard? What's going on with Courtois? What's going on with Willian? All these rumours that are floating around, I'm sure he's extremely upset with this situation. No wonder they've offered him 300 grand a week to stay because he's absolutely gold for, the, for this team. If Chelsea are honestly going to make a top four push, is this a guy they can afford to let go? No, they can't. No. I mean, he's worth every single penny for me. He's not one player, he's two. I mean, mm. look at the ground he covers. Look at the way he reads a game. And also, it would be sending out entirely the wrong message at a time of great uncertainty surrounding Chelsea, as Craig alluded to, if they allowed him to go. They can't. Julian, Matt Miazga, American International, has been linked with a loan move to Nantes. Is this a good fit for the youngster? Yeah, I think it would be very good. I think it's a step higher from, from uh, Holland, where he was on loan last season at Vitesse, where he had a solid season, a full, full season pretty much already on loan from, from Chelsea. And I think that's a step higher for him to go to Ligue 1 in France. Nantes is a good club. It's, they've got a new manager. They had an interesting season last year, but they're making good signings. Uh, you know, they have a few Brazilians. They, it'll be a very competitive playing team. And I think for that, they would need some solid centre-backs at the back. And he's, he's told he was very good with the U.S. against France in a friendly just before the World Cup. I thought he played really well in that game. I think that game really impressed uh, the, the people in Nantes. And I think it's a very good signing for them if it works out for him, if he can adapt to the football there, to the language, to the style of, of football. But we saw it with Bedoya, for example, the, the, you know, who used to play for Nantes, the, the U.S. international as well. It seems that U.S. players can do quite well in, in Nantes. He's on loan from Chelsea. Is Nantes the level that he can start at, you think? Yeah, I think it'd be very interesting to see how he cope, especially in the big games, you know, against PSG and Cavani, against Monaco, against Lyon as well, uh, against Marseille. And, and I think then we, we'll see him a bit more tested than what he had in Eredivisie last season. And I think even in Chelsea, they wanted him on loan but at a, at a top, a higher level than what he had in, in Holland. And I think for that, it's a good fit. I, I really believe the club is a good fit for him. It's a family club. It's not, you know, he's going to be well looked after there. The, like I said, the new coach is very interesting coach. He likes playing football. He did really good at Rio Ave last season in, in Portugal. So I think it'd be a very good experience for Miazga, one that he would benefit from, you know, if things go well. Thanks, Jules. Once again, Matt Miazga on a one-year loan to Nantes. Barcelona and Manchester City have basically been going back and forth according to the odds makers. Real Madrid, Bayern, PSG, all there at 13 to 2. Juventus, sixth best odds at 7 to 1. So they've added Bonucci, they've added Ronaldo, they've been to two of the last four Champions League finals. Is sixth best fair? John, I'll start with you. Uh, I think that's about right, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at Real Madrid in third in that list, or joint third. I, I don't think we know quite how they're going to pan out mm -hmm. without Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, PSG, I'm surprised, are ahead of Juventus because Juventus are course and distance specialists, as you mentioned, at getting to the latter stages, the business end of the Champions League. I think this is, this is good for Juve. I mean, I think for Bonucci to come back 
and to reform that back three with Barzali and Chiellini is, is excellent news because that's a, a hand fitting very smoothly inside an existing glove. And I think Higuain was going to be, if not neutered, then at least compromised by the presence of Cristiano Ronaldo. So I can see the merit in him leaving as well. So I think this is a day of, of decent business. I'm just surprised it's AC Milan Higuain has gone to. With all respect, you know, Milan have been way off the pace in recent years. Uh, this is a guy who, whether you love him or hate him, maybe looks a little bit unfit at times, but his record of scoring yeah. goals as a finisher, an out-and-out -out finisher, is excellent. Now, there are some, some that will say, well, when it gets to the real big stages for club and country, he's missed too many chances. Everyone's missed chances. And I just think Higuain going, uh, going there is a strange one. But Bonucci coming in, I think Bonucci should never have left in the first mm. place, but I think there was an issue that arose after the Champions League final in Cardiff when allegedly there was a bit of a bust-up in the dressing room as, as the Juventus team fell apart in, uh, in that game. Uh, but, you know, not a young defender, but as John said, somebody who knows the club, he knows the players, he knows Chiellini and Bozagli. It's a good move for them, I just, and it's a great move for AC Milan. I just don't think it's a good move for, for Higuain. I think if you look at the, the noise that the, the board have made, the, the ownership has made, you bring a guy like Ronaldo in and you, you bring Benucci back, I, I think that only tells you one thing, that they're having a real good go at the Champions League this year because um, they've constantly won... Scudetto, um, I, I put on, I mean, I most certainly have a, a, have a few shilling mm. on, on, on that, seven to one. I think that's a fantastic bet. This should be higher up for me. Bonucci, Ronaldo, Jules are clearly kind of win now moves. Can this Juventus team win this year in Champions League? Yeah, I think so. And that's, you know, that's the objective. That's why they, they brought Ronaldo in. Uh, it's, they've come short so many times in the last few years and they haven't won it for so long as well, the Champions League, that is the, the main objective, especially the way they dominate Serie A. I think it would be fascinating to see how Allegri plays Ronaldo and where he plays Ronaldo. Do you play him as a number nine, you know, as a centre forward, because Higuain is gone, or do you keep him left and you put maybe Mandzukic in the centre, but what do you do with Dybala? Or do you play the 4-2-3-1, but we know Allegri likes it with three in midfield, Kedira, Pjanic and Matuidi. It's going to be very interesting to see what Allegri does with and having Ronaldo in, in his team and how he uses Ronaldo. I think Ronaldo's days of, to be fair, Jules, I think Ronaldo's days of clambering up and down the wide positions in, are, are pretty much gone. Uh, I think we saw that at Real Madrid. You know, Mandzukic is a player who uh, has played uh, on that left side successfully for, for, for Juventus on and off. Uh, I'm sure he'd want to play through the middle. We might see that happening at some point with Ronaldo playing, playing around him, but I think he's... We're probably going to see Ronaldo uh, leading the line uh, and how he figures the team around, around that uh, will remain to be seen. New Chelsea manager Maurizio Sarri says he's going to have a wee bit of a talk, Paul Mariner, with William after he returned to the squad a bit later than he had wanted because of quote-unquote passport issues. <laughs> but we all know the situation and it seems that William does want out of Chelsea. So, Maris, what do you make of this? Is there anything that Sarri can do to keep him there? Yeah. Has the damage been done and is his mind just set? He's got to try and persuade him to stay. Look, he's, he's not getting any younger. He's going to be 30 next week. Um, I like him as a player. I, I think he, he terrorises defences. You know, Conte didn't take to I don't know why Conte didn't take to him too kindly. He didn't play that many games. Um, I'd like to see more production out of him, yeah, because I think he's a better player than his stats show. Um, well, but before this, you were just questioning why on earth would Chelsea sell him? Exactly, then? exactly. I, I don't, I don't think it's good business. I really don't. Unless they've got, they've got somebody in the pipeline, they've got somebody in the building who, who can take over. But I, I think he's absolute key. You know, Hazard, Willian, and maybe Morata as a, as a forward three is dangerous. Well, from a player's perspective now, and of course we know that he is a bit aggrieved with his time at Chelsea and the fact that he was possibly underutilised mm. with Antonio Conte. But do you see why he's possibly not seeing that he could have a new life, a new chapter at Chelsea now that Sarri's come in? He's been linked with Manchester United. Do you see how that move may uh, appeal to him a bit more? The, the only thing I can think of is this, you know, the powers that be when he's been away with Brazil. They've had a little word with him and you know, the old saying is tapping him up. You know, maybe his head's been turned a little bit. Maybe he doesn't fancy playing in that. It's going to be 4-3-3 three, three with, with Sarri. Um, you know, does he want to go to Manchester United? I mean, they're not exactly <laughs> flying on all cylinders, are they? I mean, the but he way does know Jose Mourinho. He, he knows Jose. Yeah, I mean, they have a, a good relationship. But uh, you know, would Chelsea want to sell 
one of their top players to Man United. They're going to make Man United better. They did that with Matic. I mean, would you want to do that again? We know how, how well that went for United, how badly it went until Kante came in uh, at, um, at Chelsea. So it doesn't make any sense to me at all this. I think Sarri's really got to have a good word with him and, and got to get him on board this season. All right, thanks so much, Paul Mariner. We'll see if Mauricio Sarri can repair some of the damage or if William Mine is just indeed set and if he's on his way out of Chelsea. Paul Mariner back in the building. So happy for that, Maris. It's been a hot minute. Been a while. So let's been get a while. right into some transfer rate because the window's only open for this much longer. So let's start off with Jerome Boateng to Paris Saint-Germain. How are you I, feeling about that? I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> not good at all. Look, Marquinhos and Silva are firmly at the heart of that defence. Can he knock one of those guys out? I don't think so. He goes in the rotation. Does he want to do that? Maybe at his age. I'm guessing that, PS, uh, that Bayern Munich want to get rid of him and try and upgrade their defence. It doesn't make any sense to me, though, going to PSG. No, I'm going to say miss. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Yeri Mina to Manchester Again. United. It's been floating around, though. And <laughs> For a long, long makes, time. It makes, you know, quite a bit of sense. It makes a lot of sense for Manchester United. Um, you know, I, I liked him in the World Cup. Very dangerous in the box, attacking-wise. I think he's, he's what Manchester United... Manchester United need a central defender. A towering defender who's going to go in there and absolutely impose himself. So, from Manchester United's viewpoint, yes. For Mina's viewpoint, from does he want to leave Barcelona? Maybe he's not Steady. quite right with his feet. So, for Man United... It's got to be a hit. They've got to get somebody in. They've got to. What about this one? This one kind of made you chuckle a little Grealish bit. To <laughs> Grealish to Chelsea, Marrows. Now listen. Grealish of, of 12 months, 18 months ago, hmm. he's a type of player that get you the sack if you sign him. Exactly. Now, pe people tell me that up at Villa, he's been improved, his attitude's improved. But I can only think that this is because of quotas. I, I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Who is he going to oust in the Chelsea side? Nobody. So he's still young. Every, everybody keeps saying, oh, he's young, he's got potential, he's got this. I'm not having it. This, for me, from Chelsea's viewpoint, miss. All right, well, you have your link, so I'm going <laughs> to trust you on that one. East go to Manchester United. You didn't seem to like this one either. I don't. I don't get it. I don't. It doesn't make any sense. We're hearing Modric going to Milan. We're hearing Isco to United. I mean, what, what's going on at, in, in Madrid? I mean, look, he's a fantastic player. If Manchester United could get could get a player like that, of course, it'd be amazing. I'd, I'd be staggered if if Real Madrid let him go to Manchester United. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this is a miss. And finally, Adnan Yanazai to make it a move to Leicester. Wow, City. It, it, he's, really, he's really he's uh, really upped his game since his uh, departure from Manchester United. Yes. Going to Sociedad. If you look at his stats, he's supposed to be a provider. You know, he was going to be the next be best thing. You know, speed and skill and all this sort of stuff. Left foot. Is he going to replace Maras? Yanazai replacing Maras? Come on. He's still young too. Oh, come on. Stop saying it. What is he, 23? Mm -hmm. that's, that's getting on in football terms. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a show. Look, does Leicester need a body in there to play on the left-hand side? Yeah, they probably do. But for that one and only reason, hit. That's the only reason. All right. That's <laughs> a very thin reason, but hey, it could work out. Very Thanks thin. so much to Paul Mariner. Continue keeping track of all of these transfer rumors right here at ESPNFC.com. All right, let's keep trucking through the latest transfer news. Julian Laurent, what do you make of the rumor that Arturo Vidal could be heading to Barcelona? Yeah, it seems that this one is getting uh, closer and closer. Seb, uh, uh, Fernando Felicevic, his agent, and Arturo Vidal have met with uh, Eric Abidal, the, the new sporting director, if you want, of Barcelona, and some Barcelona uh, hierarchy as well for him to move to, to Catalonia. Uh, 31, he, was, he only had one year left on his contract at Bayern Munich and it was always a case of them trying to offer him now instead of letting, let, letting him go in for free next summer. And if you look at Barcelona, who tried to sign Adrian Rabio for PSG, but PSG didn't want to sell, they've, they've signed a lot of young players so far. Arthur from Gremio, Malcolm from Bordeaux, even Longley from, from, from Sevilla. And Vidal at 31 brings a lot of experience. You know, the language is the same, and I think it's a good move for both parts. Craig, you see Vidal as a starter? Uh, possibly. 
Um, I think he's a great signer. Uh, I think he's terrific. He gets goals. He, he's, he's a box-to-box -box player. You may have noticed they have got a couple of players that get goals. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll add to the goals. Yeah. Another, another element to the side that they're maybe looking to... That's not I mean, why they're bringing well, him, yeah? He's, bo he's box-to-box. I mean, he'll get up and down and get around. Look, uh, obviously, no Iniesta. Chavez's been gone for a while. Busquets is not the oldest, but he's got a lot of miles on, uh, in, yes. in the leg and he doesn't get about as much as he, he once did. Philip Coutinho in there as well. So, I mean, it, it could work for him. It's a great move for him if it comes off. And they're going to play, six, if they have a, a successful season, they're going to play 60-odd games, 55 games, certainly. Yeah. So, yeah, there'll be plenty of chances to, to involve him and all the others and keep them all fresh. Do Deal. you think there's a threat that they will drop out of the top four? I, I think they'll finish in the top four. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was looking now at, at the Premier League, I'd be thinking Manchester City overwhelming favourites to win it again. I don't see Manchester United finishing second. I think Liverpool are the biggest threat yep. to Manchester City. Maybe United in third, far from guaranteed. I'd be thinking Tottenham probably fourth, Chelsea fifth, maybe Arsenal sixth. That would be my, my take on it at this stage. What makes it more frustrating probably for Tottenham supporters is the fact that there's not four weeks left in the transfer window. Mm -hmm. for, for purchase, there is for sale, uh, but not for purchase because it's August 9th, the English the Premier League clubs voted for it. That is when their transfer window for buying players will, will finish. So as John said, he's left it, always left it late, but my boy, we're really cooking the books here because, you know, what, where are we now? We've got a week left. Seven days. Uh, Seven days. Week today. Yeah. Week, today. week today. 5 p.m. UK right. time. And, you know, the only upside for them is, is that we don't know what's going to happen with Arsenal. So that could be where their top four comes from. But it's typical of Spurs at the moment. And, and you know, one of the reasons that, some of the rhetoric was as it was last season from Maurizio Pochettino, and he threw a few lines out there that just got a couple of headlines about him possibly moving, was because get, they all, they've always gotten to a stage where they've had to push forward and push to the next level, and they've always failed to do yeah, so. This could be another yeah. one of those movies. It, it, it is quite remarkable that they haven't signed anybody. Mm -hmm. But they've retained some key guys. Is there some value there? Well, there's always value there. Of, of course there is, because... because Predominantly, the squad is a very, very good squad. Um, but not to have any additions is quite strange because, you know, all right, it's 23 points behind Manchester City. I mean, that's, that was a remarkable season by Manchester City. But what, what, what sort of muddied the waters a little bit is we're not sure what's going on with Chelsea. Craig's absolutely spot on. We're not sure what's going on with Arsenal. So this top four finish... You know, if Pochettino's happy with his squad, then he's got to finish in the top four at least, surely. Yes, because yes, they are predominantly a young side, yeah. just about the youngest team in the Premier yeah. League last year, and they should be growing, they should be getting better, so you would expect them to perform better. And in a sense, keeping the core players together is quite an achievement because of the fiscal policy of the club, which is to pay, frankly, below the market rate for the top players in terms of salaries. So to persuade them to believe in the project, for want of a better description, is actually an achievement in itself. But, but, you, but you have to add, Seb, when you, you, you've got to freshen things up. Particularly, you know, clubs will freshen up when they're doing poorly. But it's absolute fallacy to think because you have had a, have had a good season or, or, you know, successful season by, by your standards that you don't freshen up because yeah. players become complacent mm -hmm. and... I thought we found that one year at Celtic when, when we had a very successful season. We signed nobody. We thought we could just go again. Mm. What well, didn't happen. You always need somebody that's going to come in and kick your backside yep. and put you under pressure for your the, place. The past master at doing that was Sir Alex Ferguson. Mm. He was the past master at, at doing exactly what Craig's just talking about. So it'll, it'll be interesting. Not that it was ever going to happen, but it's a bit like saying, well, Liverpool had a pretty good season. They, they left out a few players at the end. That's why they finished fourth. Stevie will tell you that. Uh, <laughs> of course you will. You know, he will. Oh, yeah, that's why. But there is an argument to say that, but, but they were preparing for the Champions League final. And they could say, and it was never going to happen, but that's like saying, well, we can just repeat that next year. They've gone out. They've realised you've got to get on the front foot. And they've, they were doing their business very early. Correct me if I'm wrong, when the window closes mm -hmm. in, in England, can the continental teams can still buy Correct. Mm -hmm. potentially yes. top... You can sell. So, Which is unlikely to happen because, uh, you know, unless... Uh, what if somebody comes in with yeah, a massive Tottenham, bid? At Tottenham, every player has a price. Yeah. Right. So you couldn't rule that out. That's a bit like saying Real Madrid coming in for, uh, for Harry Kane. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, Daniel Levy says, as you, as you say, oh, we're quite happy with this couple of hundred million or whatever <laughs> it is. And all of a sudden, the, the rug well, from under Pochettino's feet is pulled yep. and he's left with... That is the danger. 